Okay, so we're recording? What are we doing here, Dylan? <laughs> we're gonna try and turn me into a VFX artist as I think the goal here. <laughs> yes, finally. <laughs> Welcome to our side. How's it going, everybody? My name is Julian, and I'm Keith. So we've been talking about this for a while, and I think the goal here is to be able to provide our expertise as a VFX studio and create a pathway for people who are starting from essentially scratch and yeah. give them an entry point into the industry. Yeah, and you know, you might actually be my perfect test subject for this because you've not really used Unreal? Correct. All right, so we're, we're trying to take some of this barely used Unreal and get them to the point that they can actually play a game and see an awesome effect that they've made in their game. As a visual effects artist, we use so many different tools. What we're gonna to try to do today is just stay purely focused on connecting the dots. We're going to open up Unreal, we're going to open up Niagara, Blueprints, Material Editor, Embergen, connect them all so that you can play the game and see your effect. And that's really when it becomes fun because once I do that, I can tinker, I can experiment, and I can play yeah. and really start to see the cause and effect. If I've done my job directly, by the end of this, you will be able to make this awesome grenade explosion. What do you think? I, I think you've set a very high bar for my skill set, <laughs> but uh, I'm more than happy to learn. Okay, perfect. Now, I have to assume you've at least gotten this far. <laughs> this is the Unreal Launcher. You assume wrong. <laughs> I have not even gotten it so far. Oh man, okay, all right. Well, once you download and install the Unreal Engine for free from Epic Games, uh, this is gonna be one of the first screens, but if you go to the Unreal Engine tab mm -hmm. and then library, over here, it's kind of nested, but here's where you're gonna install different versions of the engine. Yeah. We're gonna start with just 5.0.3, but the second point doesn't really matter. And I'm just gonna go ahead and hit launch. Yeah. So far I'm with you. All right. It's gonna load. This might take a minute for your first time. Okay. And once the engine has loaded, you're gonna be presented with this general project browser. This is where uh, right now we can create a brand new project or we would be able to choose from a different project if it already existed, et cetera. What I want to do for the sake of this tutorial is just start with this awesome template that Unreal's provided for the first person template. So this is a template that they've provided for a first person shooter game. Um, you can see that there's loads of other awesome templates. Mm -hmm. uh, you could also just start with a blank one if you want nothing and you want to just have a go at it on your own. Sure. So we're going to start there. Julian, what do you want to call our project? Uh, baby's first VFX. Baby's first VFX. All right, we're in. I'm, I'm baby in this. <laughs> and, and we hit great. And we hit great. Okay. Now the editor is actually going to load with this new project. Mm -hmm. And so once again, we have a new loading screen. Okay. And here we are. This is the Unreal editor. So we will play around. We do. Yeah. It, it fortunately loads us straight into a play level. The very first thing that I want to show you before anything else is that if you come up here and press play, mm -hmm. we are actually in a video game. Right oh, cool. Now. And so if I click and activate this viewport window, I can run around moving the mouse and the WASDA keys for standard sure. FPS. I can run over here to this gun and I can shoot <laughs> these sweet giant Nerf balls and hit the blue boxes. That's awesome. Right? So just out of the gate, they provided us with this cool template for a video game. Let's just we're stop gonna... right there. Yeah, we're done. Right? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> There's not really any effects in here yet. Yeah, so right. I think our, our job is just getting started. The reason that I want to call that out is because at its heart, we're making games, right? Mm -hmm. And Unreal does a really good job keeping you close to the game. Uh, everything that we're seeing should always be checked in game. And it's it's just so helpful if we constantly remind ourselves of what we're actually trying to build and why it's it's needed mm -hmm. by playing it in, in the experience. Makes sense. Now, there's a ton of stuff in Unreal. This is a very, very big and very, very powerful tool most of it you're probably not going to interface with. I've been a visual effects artist for over 20 years now. Uh, I've been using Unreal for most of my time in that, and there's probably 70, 80% of Unreal that I still have no idea how to use. Wow. Um, so I call it out because there's a lot to it. You're going to feel overwhelmed. Try not to, and just try to focus on the parts that you need to know. So right off the bat, what do we need to know? Here is obviously your giant viewport. This is where you look around and see the world. They've done a pretty good job making this feel a little bit natural if you're used to any other 3D programs or video games. Mm -hmm. So if you're used to a 3D program, let's say Maya, you can select an object, you can press F, it'll focus on it, and then if you hold Alt, you can orbit around it. Oh, cool. You can hold Alt and right-click and zoom. These are Maya's controls. Middle mouse is gonna pan. If you wanna come at it from a video game perspective without holding anything, you can just right-click and hold, and now you can orbit as if you're free-flying in a video game and you can actually move around with the Wasta keys still. So again, they're trying to make it nice and intuitive for both sides. Okay, that's the viewport. On the right-hand side are two different panels. We'll just focus on to ignore the world partition. I'll just close that actually. So on the upper right is your outliner. 
this is a list of all the stuff in your level right now. So it can be overwhelming again, but this is how you're going to find things. So like I can find SM cube eight and somewhere up oh, there it is highlighted. That's SM cube eight. Below that is maybe the more important one, which is the details panel. Uh, this is going to be all of the properties for whatever the selected object is. Every now and then we're going to go in and tinker with this. As you can see, there's a lot. Once again, we can ignore almost all of it. Unreal also does a pretty good job giving each of its major windows a search control. And so if I were coming in here and I ever needed to know where's the static mesh input, I can just type static mesh. And then it's just going to filter down amongst that massive list to show me the things I'm searching for. Got it with me? Okay. Yep. All right. Let's talk about the content browser. This is your window into all of your assets in your project. This is your, your entire game. It actually roughly replicates what's on Windows Explorer. So if I go to show and explore, you can see that wherever I installed my project, the project name and then content mm -hmm. and hey, content. And if I dive a little bit deeper, we can see that first person is a folder here and it's also a folder right here. Okay, so as I go in and create assets in here, I'm also creating assets in Windows and the folder structures. So you've got it. It's going to feel a little bit natural. And is it the same stuff that we're seeing on in these like sort of larger folder icons as well? It's the yeah. same. Yep. Okay, got it. all one to one. But this is where we're going to go through and create our assets. So I can right click over here and there's a shortcut menu of some of the more useful things to make. And then you can see there's all these menus of loads of things that we can <laughs> we can make. We're going to pay a lot of attention really just to one thing in this effects menu and materials. Just to show you how that works, actually, let me just go ahead and make a new Niagara system. And we'll skip. I'm just skipping ahead, but just to show you now, I've got a new file in my content. Got it. Right? There's, once again, this awesome search feature. Um, one cool trick with this search feature is that it only searches based off the folder that you have selected. So if I only want to search starter content, then I can come over here and I can type, let's see if anything's named Jewel. Probably not. But if I wanted to search. Was, though. Yeah, I know. Oh, that would have been random. <laughs> okay. Do you feel like that's a decent overview of what we're looking at right now? I'm, I'm with you so far. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm feeling good about it. A little bit more about the viewport over here. This is the window into our level. But a quick question here. Yep. How did you get between uh, the first person sort of control of the player and sort of this more camera? Yeah, actually. Okay. Well, we'll cover that. So if you recall, when we very first loaded, I came up here and I pressed the play button. I see. And so this is me actually playing the that game. That brings you into it. Got it. Okay. Yep. And then to get out, you can just press escape. Got it. Um, one thing that you'll often see is you can come over here, hit the hamburger menu and go to new editor window. And then it'll actually pop up a separate game window that I'm playing in. I don't know why, but this feels more natural to me. Like I've got the game and then I've got the editor. So mm -hmm. I tend to use this mode, a dual monitor setup. You could put one on one. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Um, so now I just hit escape again and I go back to the editor. These things that are placed around the editor are important. They're just known as actors. Uh, and so I'm going to use that phrase quite a bit, place an actor, drag an actor, move an actor. An actor is really just any type of object in the level. Uh, you'll notice that on these actors, they've got these little manipulator widgets. So I've got this blue square mm -hmm. actor selected right now, and I can drag it around. If I press spacebar, I can rotate it. If I press spacebar again, I can also scale it. And then press spacebar again, and it goes back to moving Got it. Actors have a lot of different classifications. And so this particular actor is called a static mesh. Any piece of geometry in the game, you can think of it as being a mesh. Okay. So any actual object that you're going to see that you want to run around on, interact with, et cetera, you can think of that as a mesh. If it animates, it probably has a skeleton in it. So we call those skeletal meshes. If it's static, then it's known as a static mesh. The static meshes tend to have a material on it. The material is what defines the lighting properties of an object. So in this case, the material is blue and it's kind of giving it this really fuzzy lighting, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And then the material itself can reference a texture. And so you can see this ground has a grid texture on it. So the three pieces of language here that we're going to refer to frequently is mesh, material, and texture. Got it. The texture is what I'm painting in Photoshop or taking a photo of whatever. It's an actual just image. It gets referenced into the material, which defines how it's used for lighting and everything else. And then that gets applied to the mesh, which is the 3D sculpture of the object. Just to clarify, so a mesh, a, a mesh is an actor, or I guess what's the distinction again between mesh and actor? Anything that I place in the level is, is an actor. actor. Okay. Yep. And that can be anything. It doesn't have to be a mesh. So it's mesh is one type of actor. The level itself would not be considered, so the, the sort of environment would not be considered an actor. We're, we're getting into the <laughs> Forget genus and phylum classifications here. 
there's probably a world where I could define a level as an actor. So, okay. um, but for the sake of simplicity, just uh, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've dug into a lot of the basic controls. Uh, I think what I want to do is keep pushing us a little bit forward, but there's, there's one last thing that I want to do before we call this brief introduction into our first Unreal project complete. And that's that I want to set us up with a working directory. So all of the content for your project lives under the content directory. We're just going to go ahead and make a new folder. So I'm going to right click in here and click new folder. And we're going to call this events. It's a general global naming convention right there that there's an effects folder. If we click in here, this space is ours to play with now. Okay, so that wraps up this very first introductory episode. What we've done so far is walk you through just starting your very first project and hopefully giving you enough of an overview of how to navigate the windows and, and what you're seeing so you don't feel too terribly overwhelmed. So I'm not panicking yet. All right, I'll say that. All right, I've got a little more time with you. Then. <laughs> uh, in the next episode, what we're going to do is actually dive into visual effects development is unreal. And uh, go ahead and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you can also check out our website where you can find all our socials. Those will also be linked below in the description. We post a lot of educational content every week. We do quick tips. We do longer form tutorials. And so stay tuned to our various channels for all of your sort of VFX educational needs.